Sometimes I make videos for you, sometimes I make them for me. This one's for me. That's what I'm saying, at least, because I gotta get this out of the way quick, because I got a road gig today, got a road gig down in San Antonio. Gonna be playing some Beatles music, check it out. Check it out, folks. Do you recognize it? Oh my God, I love this thing. I'm not even a bass player. It's the Paul McCartney Beatle bass, but which one is it? Oh, oh, anyway. I had to show and tell, because I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any razors or anything to do. And I just need to get the shave out of the way so I can prepare and get ready and drive down there. It's about a hour and a half drive to where I'm going, to San Antonio. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing all right. I hope if you have a cool trip this weekend that you have fun. All right, took a shower, did my hair. I'm gonna put some hot water on my face. We're gonna use, actually we're gonna use Barbasol today because, because I haven't used it in a while. I mean, I use it fairly regularly, but I don't think I've done it on camera in a little while. I'm just gonna use all my favorites. So if I can show you the holy trinity of my shave without a razor, it would be these things, these three things. These. Look at that hair. Woo! Johnny, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> that was after my time. That's why I didn't remember it. So anyway, we got the Captain's Choice 45th Parallel, Cherry oh, Aftershave, Barbasol Original, and Cremo Cooling Post Shave Balm. I like to do the cherry and the, the, the cooling balm together as a little treat. All right. What laser am I going to do? Well, since I'm playing the Beatles gig, I'm going to use the Beetle Razor. This Gillette. I think it's from 1966. i got to do something about that. Um, yeah, so I think it's 1966. There's photos of the, the Beatles in the early days using this exact type of razor, this white-handled Gillette twist to open. I've done videos on it before. I did a review a long time ago, so just search for, like, Beatles Razor and you'll find it. That's a nice little twist open butterfly, simple. It's got a, it's very lightweight because it's a plastic handle. And like I said, I think it's 1966. Anyway, it's vintage. All right, so let's put a feather blade in it. I've used this for one shave. I got to make sure because my oldest son keeps coming up here and uh, using my razors. Well, I say razors. No, he has a favorite that I, I don't know if he chose it on his own or because maybe I used it a little bit. And then he loves the Rockwell just like I do. Fantastic razor. Maybe I should buy him one for Christmas. I bought him a razor last Christmas, though. I bought him this uh, World War One khaki set. Do you remember that? Remember, guys? I gave this to my son last Christmas. Oh, <laughs> it's even got the mirror in it. Look at that. So it's property of the U.S. Army khaki set from 19... I can't remember when this one was. 1917? 1918? Something like that. World War One. Anyway. So I got my oldest son that one, just as a, I, I keep it up here because I know it'd probably be lost by now if I didn't. But that was just for, uh, just because he's a history buff like I am, and I thought it'd be kind of cool. Okay, maybe I should get Morocco this year, like a real razor, because he's not going to use that one much. I mean, it works beautifully, as you all well know. I have my own. Well, I'm not going to get it out. Being a little lazy today, folks. So, anywho. Yes, yeah, so my uh, weekly Beetle Bash thing. We do it every Tuesday here in Austin. If you're ever in Austin on a Tuesday, uh, from 6.30 to 8.30, at a place called New World Deli, Beetle Bash. So we, um, that's kind of an offshoot of a, of a Beetle band that I was uh, a part of back in the early 2000s. I've been seeing them since the 90s. Uh, they're called the Eggmen. Let's start shaving here, folks. It's a very mild razor. It's actually, I don't like this razor very much, but because it's a theme, that's just a whole theme. I could, um, I might change it after the first pass. I don't know. We'll see. Because it's not a satisfying shave with this razor. It just feels like it's kind of skittering over my face and over the whiskers. So it doesn't dig in like the Rockwell or the uh, Pearl Flexi. Anyway, so I used to be in this band called the Eggman. Now, I wasn't like a full fledged always on stage performing member. I was hired as the stage manager because I hired them for my 30th birthday party to play because I'd been seeing them for a while and so I knew the guys to a certain extent. And I, I was playing in two of my bands at my birthday party and then they played at the end and once they saw that, oh, this guy that keeps coming to our shows actually can play and sing and maybe we should ask him to join. So they did. So for 10 years I was in, in, with the Eggmen Man, that was so much fun. So much fun to be a pretend Beatle. And I would get on stage and do my little acoustic set in between their 
their live sets. We didn't, none of us heard about that phone call from the wife. Yeah, it's fun to be a pretend Beatle, but we never, we were never one of those bands that tries to look like them because believe me, none of us look like the Beatles. <laughs> we're all significantly older, but we did dress up in suits and we used the Hofner basses like that and the Rickenbackers and all that stuff and the Ludwig drums and played the music as uh, close as we could, you know, and the harmonies and all that. So it was a lot of fun. And then when, once I had my first son, I was like, all right, that's good enough <laughs> because I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> part of the reason that uh, I wanted to be in a band, and probably I'm not the only one that's ever thought this, is to get girls. And it worked. If you don't, if you're having trouble getting girls, no matter, almost no matter what you look like, learn to play guitar. That is my advice to all you young men out there that need direction. Learn to play guitar. Don't, not bass, not drums. Learn piano second, just a little bit, but learn to play guitar. You don't have to be able to shred and play all these crazy Eric Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan leads. Just be able to play a little bit and sing a little bit. Works like a charm. Anyway, so <laughs> I didn't need to pick up girls anymore because I got married and we had our kid. And, uh, but man, it was a lot of fun. So this, this little Beetle Bash thing I do is an offshoot from that with uh, actually three of the guys that are currently in the band and me. So that's what we're doing. We're going, we got hired to play at some golf course. I have no idea what this is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be good. Uh, you never know going into an unknown situation. We have this weekly, you know, Tuesday Beetle Bash where it's just full of friends and regulars and it's the same people and the place gets packed and we know what to expect and they love us. And, uh, you know, it, it really is a, it's a great scene. It's really fun. If you're in town on a Tuesday, come out, look for Beetle Bash. You'll find it. But this thing, I don't know. I have no idea. Second pass, by the way, folks, using the beetle razor. So wish me luck. <laughs> the thing about this little offshoot is sometimes if they want to hire the Eggman, they're a bit much because it's a full band, full experience, lights, sounds, drums. With us, it's just three guitars, Sometimes four guitars, you know, three and a bass. So we're a lot more economical. <laughs> and it's an easy setup. So as long as we have a, at least a, a friendly crowd, as long as they're not giving us the stink eye the whole time, like, what are you doing here? There have been a couple of times, like we played uh, at uh, nursing homes sometimes, old folks' homes. Do they call them pensioners' homes over there in the UK anymore? I don't know. I used to see that when I was reading about stuff. Um, and it was funny because at the time, now it's different now because, you know, the population is aging out and a lot of people in the nursing homes now are Beatle fans because they're in their mid seventies now. But back then, like 10, 12, 13 years ago, it was like the parents of the Beatles fans. So I was like, I don't know if these old folks want to hear Beatles music to them. It's like, ah, shut that racket up. And actually I did... We did get a request for Hank Williams Sr., so I think I played uh, uh, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry because I love that stuff, too. I absolutely love Hank Williams Sr. I even love a little bit old Bo Cephas, Hank Williams Jr. from the 70s. I always had a good time listening to his stuff. All right, we're taking care of business here, folks. A la Bachman, Over oh, a la Bachman Turner Overdrive. God, that was a loud slap. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd that bad. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm tired. It's hot and sweaty out there today, folks. I'm sorry. I hate to be the one to tell you, but October is only what? What is it? The 20th? It's like eight days or nine days away? Oh, my gosh. Ah, fall. Yes, yes, yes. Autumn. Autumn in New York. All right. We're going to get this over with. I'm gonna go get on my gear. I do have several Beetle outfits. Um, if you find my other channel where I do music, I just play music, and <clears throat> I show off some like Beetle jackets. Like it's from years ago. I made those videos. <clears throat> I show off Beetle jackets, like uh, you know the Beatles wore, and I got a Beetle suit. I got the Beetle boots. My... Believe me, I'm not as crazy as some of the guys in this Beetle community. I will tell you. There's this guy down in Houston who's part of a band down there, Beatle band down there, who is my hero. They're called the Fab Five down in Houston. And he, the bass player, is like 
if I could trade places with him <laughs> and have his gear and all the groovy costumes he's gotten over the years, all the he will find actual 60s items that are exact to the ones the Beatles wore, you know? <laughs> I don't know how he does it. I love it. Love it. Go see the Fab Five. I still haven't seen them. Down in Houston, my own hometown, I haven't seen the Fab Five. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, this is a, uh, this, I guess it's just going to be a, a real Beatle. Beetle, beetle, uh, uh, almost said podcast, video today. And you know what? That's okay with me. I hope it's all right with you, because that's what you're getting. You get what you get, and you don't pitch a fit. You ever heard that? You get what you get, and you don't pitch a fit. Or throw a fit, or whatever. You ever heard that term before, if you're not from the U.S.? Pitch a fit? Oh, she was pitching a fit. <laughs> it's kind of like an old school... Kind of Texas-y, Southern, I don't know. No, no, no. Remember, Texas is different than the South. You remember that. You remember that. Don't say I'm from the South. I'm from Texas, folks. My blood goes back in this land six generations. I ain't kidding. I told about that before. Though. I'm not going to bring it up again. This ain't no history lesson. Why am I saying ain't all the time? Now? But I should do the fake Beatle accent. That's the other thing. About being in a Beatle tribute group, you can turn on the uh, the Scouse whenever you want. I always find myself doing it, even when we're not in full, you know, Beatle gear and garb and all that stuff. I'm sure someone in Liverpool or Manchester or wherever is like, "Oh, shut up! That's terrible." But I enjoy it, so I'm gonna do it. I'll do it on my own time. I won't put it on here, so you have to listen to it. Being a little punchy here, folks. I think I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything yet. Oh, Lord. Actually, I did. I ate a, a protein bar thing, but that's not enough. One protein bar? Are you kidding me? Hey, you know what? For it's 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 a good razor. It's not a bad razor. I don't. It's not my favorite. It's too light. I actually don't. Kind of don't like the way the handle looks. That weird kind of tapered. Looks like a kazoo more than. <laughs> This is, this is the second video in a row that I put a dang razor in my mouth. Uh, I got a, this kid's got all the warning signs, folks. I think we need an intervention soon. I've gone off my rocker. All right, let's wash off the Barbasol and feel the face. Same old problem here is right here and right here. This isn't a bad razor. I think it was pretty cheap. It came from like, oh, like. Poland or somewhere, I don't remember where, somewhere in Eastern Europe, perhaps? It had to come from, it did not come from England, so I guess, I don't know. Everyone I saw on eBay, I got this off eBay, were, were coming from that region of the world, so I'm not sure what the deal was. I guess they sold a lot of them over there. Weird, who used this? I don't know. God, I wish I knew. That'd be fascinating. Yeah, it's a mild razor. It doesn't, you know, get rid of everything, even after three passes and some touch-ups. There's still stuff that I would, you know, like to be gone, but who cares? <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to be that smooth all the time. All right, there's the feather blade. I'm going to put it on there, let it dry. I'm going to let this sit out and dry before I put it back in its cool little case. Look at that. That's neat. I like that. I like that old stuff. Those, that old packaging and old design. It's gorgeous. All right, folks, let's dry off. Towel off. Towel off, wethead. <laughs> Did you ever watch Bob and Doug McKenzie? <laughs> One of my favorite things when I was in middle school was the Bob and Doug McKenzie Great White North record. Record. We played a record. We took a record out of a sleeve. And that, oh my God, I'm sure it's on Amazon right now. In fact, I know it is. I think I listened to it a few years ago. See, if you like Bob and Doug McKenzie, you know, Dave, uh, Dave Thomas? Is that his name? And Rick Moranis? Seek it out. It, as, a, as a nerdy middle schooler, I thought that was the funniest thing around. <laughs> They're still pretty funny, but uh, yeah. Taste change. People change. And that's okay. You don't have to stay stuck the way you were when you were 13, 14, 15. You can make changes. It's never too late. I've seen that in real people in real life. Captain's Choice. I saw, uh, I heard the story, this doctor, or this, well, he became a doctor. He was like in his late 40s, early 50s, and he said, you know what, I'm tired of doing this. I'm going to become a doctor, and he did. So more power to people that can do that. <laughs> I'm kind of, I kind of feel like I'm winding down, you know. It's like, 
I'm not gonna start a new career right now. This is it, folks. This is what we get. Oh, hmm. I don't know what to think. Anyway, that's the end of the shave. Thank you all, folks. I'm glad you uh, let me ramble like this. Sorry about the interruption in the middle. But uh, yeah, that's it. All right, time to put on the beetle boots. I gotta dry my hands off so I can pick up this bass guitar and not drop it on the ground. I put a, one of my guitars up there one time, and that sword when I was the Dread Pirate Roberts last year, and the sword fell off the thing, so I was like, I'm not putting a guitar up there. It's going to fall off. All right, come here, little Hoffner. I love this. Look at this beautiful thing. My God. German-made Hoffner Cavern Bass. Yeah, baby. All right. There we go. Okay. Have a great one. Wish me luck. Break a leg. All that stuff. See you later. Bye. Hey, this is right-handed.